there's two aspects that really interest people. One is um, talking about psychopathy, because people find psychopathy very interesting and they want to understand how it's related to crime. And in some respects it is, because we certainly have high levels of psychopathy amongst um, chronic criminals. But also understanding what's different about it, because whenever you talk to people about psychopathy, they'll say, oh yes, but isn't, you know, aren't there lots of lawyers with psychopathy? And, and you know, wouldn't it be good in a CEO? Or you know, wouldn't it be good in a president? And, and aspects of it are, but the aspects that cause people to be in trouble are the ones that we probably concentrate most on in the paper. I think the other aspect of the paper that's really interesting is understanding how to make it less likely that people will continue to be criminals. So how do we get people into what's called desistance? Uh, what do we do in rehabilitation? How do we know what we should spend time on in, in programs that are designed to help offenders in order to really make them more likely to be successful in the community? So I get to talk quite a bit there about my own research. We recently finished a longitudinal study looking at um, a bunch of high-risk criminals who'd been in rehabilitation programs in New Zealand prisons who uh, we followed out into the community on parole so we got a really good look at what helped them and what didn't and who stayed out and who didn't and why that was so we can talk about all that sort of stuff and that seems to really capture students' attention.